Good morning, everybody. I'm honored to be the first speaker for our 2024 RVSLA Connect Summit. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how I rediscovered me. The world spins and spins in circles, both physically and metaphorically. Trends die and resurface, the economy goes up and down, nothing is constant and neither are you. Not only are you not a constant, but you're also inconfinable. You aren't one thing and what you are at one point is not what you will be forever. This ever-changing nature that is life is what makes it feel so crucial to find your bricks in life, to find what makes you you, or to answer the unanswerable question, who am I? Today, I wanna to share how my perspective on this question has changed and how it has helped me to rediscover myself. When I was little, so pretty much any time before the end of middle school, I was very full of life. This is one story I remember particularly. I had just gotten my first alarm clock, you know, independence, my parents aren't waking me up anymore. And I spent a good hour debating with my father why I should be allowed to wake up at 6 a.m. We eventually settled at 6.30, but I didn't want to wake up because I had so many toys I wanted to play with before school or because I was a very busy kid. I just had this unquenchable thirst for life and for being alive. Anyone who knew me during those years of my life would instantly characterize me as chatty, first and foremost, and as a social butterfly or a raging extrovert. I was described as a child with an immense love for school and a passion for learning. I was a very big school geek and I'd throw myself all, I would throw my all into every school project I did. I was also very big into leadership. Some people might have considered me a little bossy, but I always knew how to run a productive and team-oriented project. I even loved leadership so much that my bus buddy, when I was in grade five, who was in kindergarten, and I became so close, I went to her birthday party. However, all of us here are or have been teenagers in our lives, and we all go through this type of idiosyncratic metamorphosis. And thus, we all know you can't be cool while also being perceived as a gleeful know-it-all. With this ever-dreaded threat of loneliness and the looming question of who am I playing on repeat in my head day after day, I eventually stopped reading. I stopped trying in school. I stopped thinking the best of a worst day. I stopped hanging out with my family, and I stopped seeing the point of it all. In stopping all of these things, what I really started was I started to talk less, I started to see myself as an introvert, and I really started to hate myself. All of these do's and don'ts and stops and starts started a formed checklist in my mind, a checklist that I believed made me me. And that was good enough. Bing, bang, boom, I know who I am, at least I have that. These might be the worst years of my life, worse than I'm willing to share, and I might be squeezing myself into this box, but at least I know who I am. However, I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation that we aren't compactable into a tiny box and trying to confine myself to be such, let alone undermining the qualities that were so fundamentally me, it definitely wasn't working. The box I was trying to put myself in wasn't made of concrete and I definitely hadn't found my bricks. I've mentioned that term a couple times during this presentation and I think it's time I finally explain it to you. My perception of our lives, our personality, and who we are that I've been interpreting and toying with for the past year has that all of our lives are a brick wall. No, I'm not saying we're dead ends or flat boring people, but instead that we are constructed of all of our traits, connections, interests, hobbies, and memories. And thus, all of these bricks that I've talked about are aspects of each of our lives that are significant and meaningful enough to make us who we are. I've been toying this idea for a little bit before I really believed it. Like I mentioned, I wasn't happy and I wanted to find a different perspective on life. Going into grade 11, I started to try and incorporate this mindset. It started with said desire to change and then I started letting myself socialize as much as I chose. I started putting effort into my schoolwork again. I spent more time with my family. I dedicated myself to a decent sleep and gym set schedule. And although I was in the midst of testing out all of these new things, things my former self would have loved and busied herself with all the time, I still didn't really know where to start in terms of finding my bricks. I, I'd lost my box. I didn't feel like I knew who I was. Thankfully, though, my leadership class, and RVSLA especially, really helped me find the molds for myself. One of my first days at RVSLA, they had us read through this long list of words and choose a few that we felt best represented us or what we aspire for in our lives. And then they made us cut it down, organize and cut it down some more until eventually we were left with just three values. It was in the moment of looking at my top three values, happiness, empathy, and mastery, 
that I realized little Haley isn't just my past. She is me, and she has always embodied the characteristics that so predominantly are me, the values that make me feel good and happy. I obviously cannot give everybody here a magical step-by-step -step guide on how to find their brick wall or how to build it, or how to over overcome adversity. However, I can leave you with the living proof that if where you are in life isn't working for you, don't be afraid to change. And if that change is re-exploring old hobbies, old interests, or just kind of hanging out with who you once were as a kid, then by all means explore. After all, I have now come full circle with who I once was. Thank you for your time.